Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome. We're live. Kingdom Living broadcast. Kingdom Word for Kingdom Living. I appreciate you coming on. Hello, Mia. How are you, sweetheart? Faith, congratulations on your license. God bless you. Delores Blair, God bless you. Tequila Jackson, hi, darling. All of my daughters, all of my daughters, welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen, amen, amen. I thank God for this privilege and opportunity. Thank you for coming in. Uh, God has truly been good to me. Amen. I'm coming from um, shooting sword from the hip, but I'm taking you where uh, I've walked. Amen. And I'm walking in some things, but you know what? All I know is that God is good and all I know that it's all working for my good. And for you to come on this evening is an encouragement to me. God bless each of you. Amen. Amen. Let me make this and hey darling, let me make this these announcements right quick. I'm gonna get into the word of God and then I'm gonna I'm not gonna I plan not to hold you. Amen. But we see what the, we're gonna see what the Lord is saying. Hey Angie, Angie B, get ready to type for me, darling. And Sister Moss, Lady Moss, God bless you, sweetheart. Welcome, 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 welcome. Of course, this weekend. This weekend is the leadership conference, my first leadership, Raymond leadership conference, <clears throat> excuse me, amen, and it's, we're dealing with healing for the hurt. Hey, Sister Turnage, welcome. Doris, welcome. Michelle, welcome. Amen, amen. God bless all of my daughters that are here, and those of you who are not making yourselves known. I appreciate you coming on this evening. God bless you. Even though the, the hour is late. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. But uh, my conference will be this weekend, Friday night at six o'clock. One of the presenters just texted me and it's on. He's bringing members and people have been signing up uh, through inbox, through my inbox. And so it's going to be exciting. Uh, Doris is, is my assistant in this Rhema outreach, and so she knows that the Lord is going to move. Hey, Mike. Hey, darling. Hey, 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 hey. It is so good to have you. Now, this is an honor. Mike Joy. Amen. Greetings, greetings. But anyway, the conference is going to be this weekend. We have two powerful presenters on Friday evening at West Haven Community Church, 4149 Boyingshire Drive. Uh, right on the perimeter of the Memphis International Airport. And I um, want you to come and you can uh, sign up at the door. There will be food. Uh, some of you will be coming from work. And so there'll be food for you there uh, so that you won't, you can get the spiritual and natural food. Our first presenter is Pastor David Rhodes. I just, he just texted me and I think he's really excited. Hey, Sharon. And hey, Marilyn, God bless you. And my second presenter on Friday evening is co-pastor Susan Rogers, Elder Susan Rogers. Amen. They will present on Friday evening, powerful praise team, pulling people in from the community. My son, uh, Pastor Mike Nichols, Apostle Magnif uh, Mike Nichols, will be in charge of the praise team. Those of you know him, he's awesome in the music area. And then on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock a.m., we're going to wrap it up. Y'all pray for me, yours truly. I will wrap it up Saturday morning. And we'll, our topic is um, healing for the hurt, healing for the hurt. And so each presenter will have a different topic. But I'm going to shoot from the hip whatever the Lord Holy Spirit gives me. I'm going to have something prepared. But whatever he says, that's what, the, that's what I'm going to say. I'm an ambassador. I can't say what I want to say. I have to say what thus saith the Lord. So that is this weekend. This weekend. Amen. Amen. And so then on the 29th of this month, I would be with my spiritual son, Apostle Mike Nichols, at um, the New G Church, New Generation Church, 804 South Main, right at the corner of Main and Clump. And I will be ministering there. Um, this, during their Sunday morning services at 12 noon. 
So those two are the announcements. I'll give you other announcements at our next broadcast um, uh, for the month of August. Amen. So tonight, tonight, tonight. Amen. On my way home, I was uh, driving on my way home, and I said, Holy Spirit, what? And uh, this came to me. This came to me. And it's amazing. I saw Michelle. I had a, a view of her um, Facebook post, and I saw some of the exact words that the Lord had just given to me. And hello, Sister Allie. And I said, wow, confirmation. Hey, Yukita. Hey, darling. And so the words vantage point uh, were posted on her Facebook page. And so but on the news uh, feed. But the Lord gave me, um, had uh, someone in the, in the truck with me. And I said, wow. And the Holy Spirit gave me this this evening. So I know it's going to bless someone. It's going to help me release some things. And so just uh, have your hearts and in your ears open, get a good earshot of what the Holy Spirit is saying. You're going to have to be able to discern this. Amen. If you can't just listen to this in the natural realm and get deeply what the Holy Spirit is saying to me and to you as well. But our topic for this evening, thank you, darling. <laughs> our topic for this evening is from which vantage point are you standing in life? I am so, um, let me just say plain words. I'm just a little bit peeved with church folk, especially those who carry the titles, those who carry the paperwork saying they are this, that, and the other, and they feel like they know everything. And um, regardless of where the people are, having the care for the sheep, care for the people of God, you try to at least empathize, if not sympathize, with where people are when they are really going through some things. And so the Lord spoke to me. He said, it depends on the vantage point from which you are standing as to how you can experience and see things. Now, here's the, here's the situation. You've got pastors and apostles and and all of this, um, who are in the positions, but the vantage point from which they are standing, they can, they're, they're so aloof from the sheep until they have no sensitivity to what other people can, are going through. You may have your job, you may be making well, and you may have all the things lined up. Hey, Sister Holloman. And Sister Oliver, you may have everything going for you. And you may have a, a plan. You may have a business plan. You may have a spiritual business plan. And you have it all lined up. But I'm going to tell you something. That does not mean that God has stamped, put his stamp of approval on it. <laughs> that does not mean that God has put his stamp of approval on it. When I was attending Regent University, I was working on my second master's degree. And we had a discussion about um, when people, when God, when you're in a, uh, the boardroom for a ministry, that the right way to do it when, when you have something before you, projects or issues before that ministry or that church, um, you have what is called, I can't think of the word right now, but everybody has to come into a, an agreement. If you're going to pray, if you have nine people on the board and three people come out with one consensus and six people come out with a different point of view, something is wrong because the Holy Spirit is not divided. And so what you have is you have people in the church who think they mean well, but they know more than the pastor. You can talk to them just personally one-on-one. -on -one. They know all about your business. They tell you what they... But look at their stuff. Look and see just where they are. Have they really uh, shown and demonstrated that the Holy Spirit is leading them and guiding them? Now, thank you, Holy Spirit. Success is not measured by things. God, thank you for that download. Success is not measured about 
what you have. I, I feel the spirit now. Success is not measured about 5,000 members. That's not success. That is not necessarily success. Success is measured by have you done what the Holy Spirit said do? Are you carrying out his purpose? I don't care if there are 15 members in your church. If you've carried out his mandate, then you need to give God the glory and walk by faith and walk in victory because you've done what God has told you to do. God bless you, Sister Renee, and God bless you, Sister Janice. Amen. So we've got this status thing going on. And see, we're standing from a vantage point that, that, that the Holy Spirit is not really dealing with us. So tonight, hey, Sister Alice, hey, darling. And so people who surround you standing on the outside, giving you what they think they know, looking in, can always tell you what you need to do until people stand in your shoes you you must learn men and women of god you must learn to hear god and follow his lead regardless of what others think i'm telling you i'm at that point and so you know i, I i'm going to be polite and all this but i hate it when you know i don't like to be patronized when i've heard from the lord i don't i tell y'all all the time my husband doesn't like it don't coddle me you're going to serve as an adjunct. Don't coddle me. Work with me. Serve. And, you know, I, we, 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 I'll do what we do with serving humility, but don't do that because that's not of God. There was, uh, now God gave me two areas, and this, these are the only two areas I'm going to deal with on tonight from two vantage points. And the first vantage point that I want to deal with tonight, the Holy Spirit gave me driving home. He said to me, there are going to be valleys. This is what he said to me. And he said, and then there are also going to be mountaintop experiences. But let me say to you right now, right now, as old folks say, let me tell you right now, you can be at a dangerous point in either one. See, people have measured and defined and described mountaintop in terms that God has not described them in. Jesus, um, when he walked the earth, notice now there were times that he was not really considered as being anything but a rebel. Come on in here. And then God had, God strategically allowed him to have a period in his ministry, what is called popularity. Not popularity in the sense of him trying to pump himself up, but popularity in the sense that God had a time set for the people to know who his, his son was. That was the reason he came here, to demonstrate who he was as far as his purpose in, in winning the souls and carrying out the mandate of his father. So the first, thank you, the first vantage point has to be those of us who are walking in the valley. Psalm 23 talks about the valley. One through four, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, David is dealing with this from the vantage point of a shepherd, general vantage point of a shepherd. He said, I shall not want. I shall not be in a position to want because, you know, I'm a, I'm a, she I'm a sheep and my shepherd is going to take care of me. So I have no need to want for anything. That doesn't mean as a believer that you don't come into times that there will be want. Because that's how you get to know that God can feed you. Amen. And so verse 2 says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside them. He's taking care of the sheep. Amen. And he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Not for mine, but for his name's sake. Because he's my shepherd. He has called, you know, over in John 10, and I spoke from that on yesterday. Uh, it talks about the shepherd calls each sheep by name. And if you do research on it, there was a special name given to each lamb, to each sheep, given to them by the shepherd. And he had such a relationship with the sheep that when he would call their names, they would go not to any other shepherd. There were other shepherds in the community. Those sheep that were named by that shepherd, they followed that voice that they heard 
and they gathered around his feet because they knew that that was their shepherd. So David is taking the role here as a shepherd. Since he makes me to lie down in the green pasture, he takes me where I can eat and feed on the green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He wants me to be restored. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yay, look at here now. This is the fourth blessing here. The blessings of protection and guidance. Yay, though I walk through the valleys of the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear any evil. He's confident. The sheep is confident. David is confident because he knows who his shepherd is. Come on in here. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Evil will not be able to overtake me. The lions and the tigers and the bears that are there. There's a mountain on one side and a mountain on the other side. And in the middle is the valley. And I, and I don't know what's ahead of me. But a good shepherd, when you research the, the eastern shepherds, a good shepherd will lead out. He, leads, he goes before his sheep, according to John chapter 10. He goes before his sheep. He doesn't lead them from behind. He doesn't lead them. Uh, by a sheepdog. He leads them and he leads out. He goes before them because he's that source of protection. There are too many shepherds that are leading their sheep, but they're leading them in the path where they really can take any direction they want to. Amen. Give them the truth, people of God. Give them the truth so they can be led in the path of righteousness. But look, this is an idiomatic, symbolic, it's an in symbolic description of the world meaning darkness and death they're symbolic valleys on the earth when we walk through them we're talking about walking through a uh, darkness and walking through death and walking through deadly situations but even though those situations will come my way hey nashasta even those those situations are going to come my way I have the confidence in the shepherd, the one who leads me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear any evil. Fear will come, people of God, but we don't have to fear. As soon as you begin to uh, hear the voice of God, the word of God that you know, the word that's why you have to know the word of the Lord. You need to settle yourself and, and hear the voice of God and hear what the Lord is saying to his sheep and saying to you, as one of his sheep. And when you hear that, though you must walk through it, hallelujah, some of you may be walking through your valleys, the valley of the shadow of death. Don't fear, because God is with you. He said, he promised us, he's not a liar. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He says, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you're with me. Your rod and your step. You know, David knew that sometimes the shepherd had to lead his flock through some treacherous storms, through some treacherous terrain. And so he writes from the vantage point of a sheep. The saints used to sing a song years ago. Take the Lord along with you everywhere you go. And they would repeat, they would do the repeat thing. You're going to need him. You go well, they didn't say going to. They said you're going to need him. You're going to need him. And they said, everywhere you go, you're going to need him. You're going to need him everywhere you go. Take the Lord along with you everywhere you go. Take the Lord along with you everywhere you go. We used to sing that, and the saints would beat the tambourines. And hey, Lashonda, they would beat the tambourines. And you could sense the, the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost in that room. They knew what they were singing about. Some of them were in valleys. Some of them were walking through the valleys of the shadows of death. Some of them were dealing with uh, unsaved spouse, some spouses. Some of them were dealing with wayward children. Some of them were dealing with lack of enough food to eat. I know what I'm talking about. I grew up in those kind of in that kind of neighborhood, but they knew that God would never leave them. Hallelujah! They knew that God would never forsake them. That's where we got to get to. Let me, let me give you a secret here. You won't know within your spirit. You can know it up here. 
but you won't know how God can do this until you get in the middle of that valley, till you get into those dark places. God is light. His word is light. And we take that word and we take the Lord inside that valley with us. He'll put a light in the midst of darkness where you saw no hope. You didn't see a, 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 a pin light of light. The Lord will say to you when the word of God comes and you begin to speak that word and you will begin to stand on that word. Guess what? God will put a flicker of light in there for you to be able to walk where you need to walk so that you hallelujah. So you won't walk into anything. You know, it's, it's, it's dangerous to get up out of your bed in the dark room, even though you are kind of familiar with that room. You stand a greater chance of stopping your toe or running into something because you have no light. But the minute the light comes on, darkness has to go. Darkness has to flee. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So here, God, David gives the the fourth blessing of his shepherd, the Lord's ability, the Lord's willingness. Come on in here. Us. Ah, the rod and the staff, the shepherd's rod and the staff. That was the equipment that they had to watch the sheep. Hallelujah. To protect the sheep in the dark situations, in the when when there were uh, bears and lions and tigers and snakes and all god hallelujah thank you jesus hello hey sister tammy hey baby god was there god was in the midst with david so david used the illustration of the rod and the staff he said they comforted me they they made me feel like even though I, we couldn't see well the terrain was rough Amen. And, and that there could have been some, some, some dangerous animals over to the left or to the right or standing on the mountaintop above us. I felt safe. There's a song I love they used to sing years ago. And I think um, Pastor Sherry Livingston used to sing that song when we were all in the district together under Bishop Lee Ward. And um, I love it when I hear it now. Safe in the arms of Jesus. Amen. And I love that song. And I sometimes the tears would, would, would fall from my eyes when I hear that song being sung. So David was comforted. People of God, the saints of God are going through different things. Come on in here. That's part of our life. That's part of our growth. That's part of our, uh, uh, the way we get our strength. So David was comforted by the Lord's presence and his protection. We're never in situations where the Lord is not aware of where we are. We're never in any, I don't care how rough, hallelujah. I don't care how uh, strenuous, how stressful, how dark those days may be. We are never, oh, uh, Angie B, type that for me, baby. We are never in situations where God leaves us alone. He's always there. He's always there in whatever that situation might be. I don't care how, how dark it may seem. Hallelujah. He's there. Like I said, Hebrews 13 and 5 says he never leaves or forsakes his people. Yes, yea, though I walk through. Notice that, <laughs> that descriptive word here. Through the valley of the shadow of death. Through means that you come in, in one, one entry, entrance, and you're going to go out the other. That's through. <laughs> we have to walk through the valley. It means I'm coming out. I'm going to be more than a conqueror. I'm going to have a testimony. I'm going to be stronger. That's the key right there God gave to me. This thing is so in my spirit. That in order for us to be strong, we've got to have some hard places. Amen. I, there's no other way for it to happen. We, don't, we can't design our rough places. We can't design our test. We just have to be stay in the close proximity. Stay in at that intimate level with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, you know, right now I can just sense his presence. I have my moments, but I can sense the presence of God and the peace and the calm will come over me. Amen. And I thank him for that because, you know, we could just flip. We could flip. 
you know, and, and just go into town and, 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 and you know, like I say, I, I, folks mean well, but don't, don't tell, you're not in my shoe. Just ask God to give you some, some love and some, some mercy and some grace. Don't pamper them and pet me. Encourage me, but don't pamper and pet me like, you know, I've, I've, I'm in a, um, y'all help me out. Like I'm, I'm, I'm forlorn and I'm distraught. Amen. You can send messages to people like that. You know, in the hospital, you know, when hospital rooms or people sick beds, when I was growing up, you know, saints didn't go in there looking like, you know, people come to you and say, you know, you look like you real tired. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're sending subliminal messages, well, almost direct messages to that individual. You're sowing seeds. You're sowing negative seeds. Ask God to give you what to say or don't say anything. Ask the Lord to give you what to say to people or don't say anything. Amen. If you can't be a help, don't be a hindrance to people. Amen. So here's this fourth blessing. The Lord gave you this. He said, because in that valley, you're going to see all kinds of frightening things. The enemy comes. He comes to frighten you. He comes to make you feel like there's no hope. He comes to make you feel like you may as well just throw in the towel. Amen. And so those of us who've been saved a while, we ought to be at that level of encouraging people who have not reached that level. Maybe they're new believers in Christ Jesus. But I'm finding out you've got some people who've been around for a while and they still haven't learned. So they're really not able to help other people. Amen. And so he says, uh, he talks about the rod and the staff being the shepherd's tools. And those, those two things, and I want to get into details of that, but they're to guide um, and to correct the sheep. We, some of us can't handle correction. We can't handle it. You know, the pastor will tell us something or encourage us not to do it. We get in trouble. We want everybody to pray with us. We want everybody to fast with us. We want everybody to uh, pull us up out of it. But sometimes God says, no, I'm going to let you stay in here because you didn't do what I told you to do. I'm going to get you up, but I'm not getting you up right now. It's hard pill to swallow, but it's the, it's the care of a loving father. Because there's a life beyond this life, people. We have to learn what we learn over here. But once we check out of here, there's something greater than over here. But while we're here, God wants us to grow. He wants us to be conformed. Yes, he wants us to be, yes, the Lord, he wants to be, us to be conformed to the image of his son. His son suffered, people of God. I don't know why we feel like we're not going to suffer. Yes, it's a hard place. Yes, sometimes we need people to help us. I like the right people around me when I'm walking through some stuff. Amen. I don't like all of this stuff folks do. I like people who are strong but yet can sense my pain. Come on. They know what to say to me. They know how to pray. They don't have to say a lot. You know, you don't go, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Don't do that. Timing. You got to understand timing. Understand timing here, people of God. There's a time for everything, and you can be off if you're not hearing from the Spirit of God. Your voice, you got, you got to hear the voice of God and know what to say, know when to say nothing. And guess what? God will use you to be help and a strength of that person. So we, we do. We need human beings. We need the right people around us. We need the right people there in the midst of whatever we are dealing with, whatever we are going through. Amen. And um, people know I have a real pet peeve about going into prayer meetings and then you pray in people's business app. And I'm going to tell you, people will go around snooping around trying to figure out if the people don't tell you, just pray. Just pray. That's what you call nosy. Nosy. Psalm 23 and 5, New King James Version says, he, it, it lets us know. He says he prepares, I love this one right here, people, women and men of God. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our opposers, our enemies. He says, he, my shepherd anoints my head with oil because they have lice, the sheep have lice in their heads and the oil will go in there and, and work those lice out of the head. So whatever it is, 
that is attacking you and oh thank you holy spirit and irritating you and making you feel uncomfortable he said right in the hallelujah thank you jesus right in the midst of all of that that's going on and what the enemy is trying to do what the enemy is oh i hear you holy spirit down though down low god is saying to me some of the reason we need the oil for the uh what's going on is because the enemy around us has planted stuff there oh because it's connected here look at it you prepare a table before me in the presence of my end look at the next thing and you you anoint my head with oil my cup runs over let me tell you about the cup running over i'm talking about him being confident now about the shepherd well, i didn't intend to go this long but uh, i'm not gonna hold you that long tonight amen i'm gonna try to get me a good night's sleep here tonight but look let me say something when the shepherd would uh have the sheep around him he had his rod the stamp because the end of that he would take it and pull the if the sheep was looked like he's about to um, or the cliff or get into a ravine you pull that sheep back in but notice this now look at all of this in here together he said there's a table and the table represents eating food you prepare a table before me in the present mind. in other words david is saying holy spirit is downloading now because i've not heard this before holy spirit is saying that when god sets a table before us on the table is food he didn't just set the table without preparing food to sit on the table and the purpose of the table is so that you can put your feet under it because on the table is the food that you need thank you holy ghost i hear god speaking to me now so god wants me to say to you tonight there's a table set before you with all your poses around you come on holy ghost and on that table Oh, I hear God speaking to me now. On that table, oh, help me out, Angie B. On that table is the word of God that he downloaded in you before you got to this point and knew your enemies were surrounding you. The word of God, the promises of God, that's the food on the table. Whatever is needed in your system, in your spiritual system, that's the food on that table women and men of god he says that i'm going to set that table up before you and i'm hearing the holy ghost saying on that table is everything that you gathered from him from god when you went grocery shopping come, oh i hear god in here when you went grocery shopping you say where did i go grocery shopping you went grocery shopping in your devotion yesterday hallelujah you went grocery shopping at the bible study come on in here god you went grocery shopping while the preacher was up preaching you went grocery shopping when you sat down to read and study come on and memorize the word of god and now that you've done your grocery shopping god said now i'm setting the table he set the table with with whatever you shopped for if you didn't shop for it it's nothing on the table you don't expect anything on the table if you didn't go shop for it. So you went into God's grocery store. You purchased all the things that you needed. And when the time came, I'm going to say when the fullness of time came and you had to walk through that valley and your enemies were surrounding you and they whispering and talking and saying, well, why didn't they do this? And why didn't they do that? Why she this? And why she that? I don't know, child. Oh, and it's mostly women gossiping, chit-chatting don't know nothing just running their mouths and so god said when you when you are going through what you're going through you got to remember i am your shepherd and when you spend that time in the word with me i'm going to feed you from that word that you took the effort to go get i'm going to take that same word that you shot for and i'm going to lay it on that table and when you get in the in the middle of this thing in the middle of your valley and you see your enemies and you know they're standing around you whispering and talking and and jaw jacking and, and talking what they know and talking what they don't know i'm going to spread that table out huh? oh y'all I, I feel god right now and when he spreads that table out with nothing but the word of god guess what you're going to start eating and you know what what did what did the, the scripture say about it's like it's sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb 
Ah, my God. So when you start eating that word, it gets sweeter and it gets sweeter. Hallelujah. Ah, and it goes down good on the inside. And guess what? When that word gets that sweet to you, folk around you ain't going to understand. But I don't know why she didn't faint. I don't know why she didn't fall out. Child, if it had been me. But you've tasted of something. Hallelujah. you tasted of the word of God. And the word of God nourished you. And the word of God fed you. And the word of God gave you strength because you were in the middle of a valley and you needed God. David needed God. David said, I'm your sheep, Father God. I need you to shepherd me. David assured us, I'm the sheep. God is shepherd. He takes care of his own. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't look to anybody else but the Lord. Hallelujah. To take care of me. Folk will be with you one day and against you the next. You better uh, uh, send your Tim up, as the old folks say, and you better trust in the true and the living God. This is God's revelation to me about that part of this passage. We're going to get out of the valley now. We're going to go to the mountaintop in just a minute. But I'm going to finish this up. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Let me tell you something. Those of you that are walking through some valleys, hey, Sharon, hey, baby, and you, you took the Lord in there with you, you, took the word of God, you shot for that word, you had that word in your heart. Lord, no, hide the word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Hide the word in the heart so when the time comes, the Holy Spirit needs to come at that, at that moment. The Holy Spirit can let that word rise up in you. And when it rises up in you, it will come to nourish you. It's like that cud that the cow, uh, the beast would chew. In the Old Testament, the illustration was the cow chewing the cud. You chew and chew and get all the nourishment out of it. Take it back down in that other stomach. Bring it back up and still get more nourishment out of it. Take it back down and then bring it to that other stomach and take it back up. And you are being nourished by the unadulterated word of God, the truth of the word of God. So, so many of us are so weak. Hey, Byron. Hey, Adriana. Some of us are so weak because we're not in the word. That's the thing I'm telling, I'm finding out too. People will be faithful to studying the word. But the key is when you get in the valley, you got to know how to apply it. But before you get to the deeper part of that dark valley, you should have had some testing time. Come on in here. You should have tested. You know, you know how you test certain things. You test the cake. Used to be um, Dolores is on here. They did what they call a whole cake. And that they, in order for, before they put that whole batter in it, they cooked from scratch back then. And I don't cook cakes if they're not from scratch. Faith knows faith is a cake baker. And when you bake that cake from scratch, man, you melt, make that sure that butter is soft, man. And, and you make every sure all your eggs and things are room temp and and you begin to whip that butter up and make it ready for the sugar. And you begin to slowly and gradually start putting your dry ingredients in there. Amen. And what they, the, the old people would do, they didn't have a mixer. Man, my aunt would take that great big old mixing bowl, take that great big old big, big, huge spoon, start whipping that arm. That arm was strong. She'd whip that batter up. And before she cooked that cake, because she loved her family, before she cooked that cake, she got a little small cake pan, and she just got a sample. Oh, I feel God right now. See, this, I hear the Holy Ghost. See, uh, the, the part of the bread, the whole loaf, when you get a slice out, the slice is indicative of the whole loaf. So whatever is in the slice is in the loaf. And so what she would do is take that spoon, maybe a great big spoon of it, and, and make sure her pan was greased and it set aside room temp and, and, and you grease it, powder it, put a little flour in it, powder it, put it on in uh, the batter in there and she would put it in the oven to test it. You don't go into the, God's not going to allow you to go, if you love him, he's not going to allow you to go into the valley until you have had some mini valleys. M-I-N-I. -I. You've had some pre-testing Come, you remember when Jesus was thrust into the valley, into the wilderness? That was his time of testing before God allowed him to go through the major test. Come on in here. So some of us have to allow the Lord to do that. So she'd take that 
what she called it a whole cake. And she cooked it and she would wait and let it get done. She would taste it. And if there were any little children or grandchildren around, she would allow them to have a piece of that whole cake. And whatever that whole cake tasted like, she knew her cake was going to taste like that. And so what she would do, she says, oh, this is going to be fine. It has everything that it's got the right amount of sugar. It's got the right amount of butter. It's got the right amount of, of flavor. It's got everything that is the eggs, everything that it needs. So it's ready to go in the, oh, I hear God downloading in me. Some of us went into the oven and didn't stay. We're not done. We're not done. Not out of those shots. We're not done. We keep falling out. And we got to ask the pastor for every little thing. Should I do this? And should I do this? When are you going to know for yourself? God told you to discern. If he teaches and trains you and guides you, at what point are you going to lean and depend on the Lord? So we need to go back into the oven. You're not done. My girlfriend uh, teases me all the time. And we'll be teasing and she'll say something uh, will happen. She said, Oh, Lord, stick a fork in me. I'm done. Well, some of us are not out of the old shot. Some of us are undone. Amen. We got all kinds of spirit. You may not be sleeping around. You may not be drinking. You may not be smoking. Come on in here. But you run your mouth too much. Come on in here. You whisper and you gossiping and you're going on too much. Come on. You, you dig ditches for folks and you, 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 you block folk out of stuff and you, you set folk up. Come on in here. That's not of God. You're not done. God does not allow us to go into these valleys, this big, these big valleys, without us being tested prior to going in there. Because you're not ready. You, you're faint. He doesn't want to send us in there unprepared. God prepares us for the valley, you all. I'm sorry. We, if, you didn't, if you didn't go in there right, it's because you didn't hear him. You didn't, you didn't uh, take note of what was happening to you. God was trying to show you with the things that you were walking through. Something else is coming ahead of you. Take these little bitty tests. Learn from them. So when the big one comes, you'll be ready to walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to finish this part. I plan to stay on this as long. I'm going to get out of here. He says, you prepare... Hey, baby, a table before me in the presence of those who talk and talk, talk and smack, as y'all say. And you talk in the word. That word is spread out before you on that table. And you got your strength. They don't understand what happened to you. Thank you, darling. <laughs> yes, thank you, darling, Sister Cassandra. And so you, he says, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Now, here's the part about the cup that I learned a few years ago. You got the rod and the staff. You, got, and you know, David had his slingshot because he that that's the weapon that God gave him, the tool he got. But the shepherd goes and gets water, and he has a cup. And as he walks, the cup is full. Come on, come on, y'all help me. I feel this thing right now. The cup is full. And, but as he walks, it splatters out. The water splatters out. He keeps walking, the water splatters out. And every time, oh my God, thank you, Holy Ghost. Y'all, I feel the anointing of God so strong. Every time water splashes out of that cup, the sheep encourage because they there's still water in that cup. Water splattering out. The more he walks, the water splatters. And the sheep and the lamb know the shepherd's got me. If he's got the water that I need. He's got the rod and the staff. I'm comforted by that. But also my cup is running over. There's enough water in the cup for all of us, all of the sheep, all of the lamb, because the cup is running over. Is your cup running over even in the midst of what you're going through? Though you may have your times and your moments of tears, you got to know that God loves you. You got to know that, that he, you can be comforted. You can have the confidence in him that he's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He's going to provide for you. You, whatever your name is, you and you and you and you and you. Hallelujah. So when you're in your valley, your enemy won't 
and your enemy can't share it. People on the outside of good run a lot, run their mouths a lot. They can't they, they, they can't share your your place. My friend, she she'll share things. We can we can come together and she can be going through what I can be going through, but we can share it, we can feel it, we can empathize with each other because she's sort of in there with me. But oh, I hear the Holy Ghost, hear the Holy Ghost downloading, but your enemies are around you talking. Oh my God. Mm. But your true people. People who can identify with you are in that place with you. Thank you, Father. And you know they're there because you can sense the genuineness. You can sense the love. They say the right thing at the right time. They're going to blabber, blabbering their mouths and, and the, the, uh, false comfort. Oh, I hear that right now. False comfort. Come on in here. False comfort. Oh, hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I know genuine. You know genuine. Y'all know when people are genuine. So this is what David is dealing with. David had enemies. Come on in here. So they can't share in that moment, that time of pain, that time of distress. They can't share it. Holy Spirit said, but a true friend will share, and they will be able to empathize with you from that vantage point. Now, this is the vantage point of the valley. Vantage point now we want to talk about, and I'm going to get out of here, is the vantage point from the mountain top. There are a lot of people who are standing on what they call the mountain top because you hear them say, I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. And this goes with the, the uh, corporate world as well as the church, religious church world. People work their way up. Some sleep their way up. But the mountaintop view is a view where you appear and you seeing everybody else down there. Be careful. We already know about the valley. Because in the middle of the valley, God is with you. I told you the positive side of the valley and the negative side of the valley. You got folks, you got enemies in there, you got dogs, you got animals. You got... But with the mountaintop, there's danger. Number one, you could fall over because you're so heavily drunk on yourself. You could, hey, Erica, you could fall over. You could tilt over because you are so heavy and full of yourself. My, 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 my. You can be on that mountaintop. The next danger is, and I'm shooting from the hip now, the next danger from being on the mountaintop, come on, is the fact that while you're up there, come on in here, you have begun to take on an attitude that you are more than the people that you're looking down upon. There's a danger in the mountaintop. The positive side of the mountaintop, you can be on the mountaintop because you realize how you got to that mountaintop. You realize that it was God and God alone and you give him the victory. And your praise is where your, your feet are standing from that vantage point, the vantage point of a mountaintop. Because you've had a mountaintop experience with the Lord. Martin Luther King said something about having the mountaintop experience. He said, I've been to the promised land. I've seen the mountaintop. Sometimes being on the mountaintop, you can experience being translated. <laughs> right from the mountaintop. And then guess what? People will wonder, well, what happened to Sister So-and-so? And all of a sudden they realize God has escalated you. God has elevated you because you understood all the way up the mountain. You consulted with him. You communed with him. And when you got to the mountaintop, you recognize that you didn't get there on your own. Too many people get into the mountaintop on their own, on their own merit. Or oh, this one knows somebody and she knows somebody. So I got there because of who I knew. If God orchestrates is that that's one thing. But if you did it on your own, you you own your own. So we have to be careful. I, the Lord brought this on my way home, Matthew chapter 17. Hey Gail, God brought this, this passage to me because I'm going like, okay, now for God, where you want to go with this word? Immediately. He reminded me of Matthew chapter 17. Verse 1. Listen to this. Now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother. Now, these were his 
core group. This is his core. <laughs> All right, y'all. Do what that what that means now. Your core group can be off. Can be in the position of they didn't they didn't catch it. What did Jesus say? Have I been so long with you all this time and you still don't get it? You still don't understand it? Hey, Amen. So look at this. Look at Matthew 17. I'm going to get out of here. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up into a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone. Now the glory of God was up here. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them. You got to understand, it was a being a transition here from the prophetic realm. Come on in here. Come on. You got to, they, they represent something. I won't get to that tonight. But anyway, it represented a transition, a passing of, of the guard. We had the law. And now we had the prophetic realm. All right. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us, uh, us to be here. Catch this. Holy Spirit download. Some people are on this mountain top. They don't understand how they got there because they got there on their own. God is not glorified. God is not pleased. And guess what? <laughs> they have the wrong attitude of why they up there. They want to have, here they talking about, oh, it's so good for us to be, oh, let's, do, if you wish, let's make three tabernacles. One for you, God, Jesus, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. This is uh, accolades. Jesus wasn't about that. That wasn't what he was about. He, while he was yet speaking, behold, a bright cloud, I'm going to get out of here in just a minute, overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud. But this is a, this is a, a momentous uh thing happening here and they didn't get it they didn't get it <clears throat> people we don't get it we don't get it we don't get the valley experience we don't understand that we and we really don't even understand the mountaintop experience when god elevates us let me say this to you when god elevates us and we know that it was god we give him the glory you're going to have some enemies who got up there with you but they got to the mountaintop for the wrong reason, and God's anointing is not on their lives. So you got the enemy on the mountaintop, you got the enemy in the valley. You got to learn how to handle what God has done for you and what to do when you're in the valley, what to do when you're on the mountaintop. Because in spite of the valley experiences, in spite of the mountaintop experiences, guess what? God must be glorified. That's how you know the difference. That's how you know. And so while he was yet speaking, they, here he wants to build three tabernacles. Well, that's what, that wasn't what it was about. God, we, the transition was taken. We've left the law of Moses now. And now we're getting into the prophetic realm here. Have you, have you lost it? And then Jesus, you know what Jesus stood for. So then Peter answered. Oh no, uh, and behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him, talking with Jesus. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make three. Look, listen to this. If you wish, <laughs> if you wish, he's saying now, you know, we, we all up here now. We we that and all the bag of chips, Jesus. Now, since we up here, we may as well go party. Oh, they were <laughs> oh this is true to the church today, folks. It's true of us today. Our mindsets are not godly. Our mindsets are not righteous. You hear me? Since we're here, come on, let's just give you some accolade. Nothing wrong with giving honor, but if your motive is wrong, your purpose is wrong, God's not in it. I'm sorry. So he says, now if you wish, let's make three tabernacles. <laughs> and he says, uh, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And while he was yet speaking, Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is, take the focus off of the, the tabernacles, uh, Peter James. Uh, this is my beloved son. This is why I'm here. I'm setting my approval on the transitioning from one from the law, one to the prophetic. And now we're going into this future realm here. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We're getting ready to go into the church age. We're getting ready to go into Christ coming, the cross, the age of the cross, and the cross is going to take us into the church realm. And so he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, guess what? They fell to their faith. People don't even know the anointing of God anymore. They think the shouting and bucking and dancing and, and, and they can uh, rhyme words in the message and, 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 and they throw, almost throw the purses and the money up at the pulpit. They think that's the anointing. We don't have a clue as to what God is really trying to do with his people. God has a select handful. He always has a remnant of people who understand where God is right now. What is he trying to do with his people right now? You can begin to see and sense the, and smell the stench in the church, in the visible church. And you don't want to have any part in it. But then people think you're trying to be rebellious or they think you're trying to be um, more than what they are. That's not it. You see, you hear, you hear the voice of God. He's speaking to you through his word. He's speaking to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. And you know this is not pleasing to the in the sight of the Lord. So they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. All of a sudden now he won't build three tabernacles. All of a sudden they're down on their faces. It's a bad odor. Yes. God bless you, Lady Connie. God bless you. Thank you, darling. He says, but Jesus and, and it says they um, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But there's the contrast. Jesus came and touched them. See, some of us need another touch. I'm sorry. I don't care what titles we're holding. Uh, supervisor, bitch, I don't care. Some of us have strayed away from the center. We strayed away from where the center, uh, center part of where we're supposed to be. Because everything around us in the world, we're not supposed to be affected by it. And it's coming to the church now. This is my beloved son whom I will please. Hear, please, hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were great afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, now this was the core group. These were the administrative assistants of Church of God of Christ. People that are here. Administrative assistants. Abba. Mm. And they fell on their faces. Jesus touched them. And Jesus said, get up. Don't be afraid. They did all this smacking now. All this talking about the three, building the tree, tapping that God. Oh, it's just great for us to be up here. We up a mountaintop. Jesus touched them and said, arise. And do not be afraid. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one. How God moves, you don't see flesh. You don't see, come on in here. They saw no one but Jesus only. That's what we're focusing on. He should be the central part of what we're doing. Christ and him crucified. They saw no one. And then it said in verse 9, but Jesus. Verse 9 now, as they came down from the mountain, okay, we're coming down from this mountain top experience. What you, how you gonna act now? You're already up there, you've, you've had that experience now. How are you gonna act? You gotta come down. Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. This is so typical where we are today. We're either, sometimes we're in the valley, sometimes we're on the mountaintop. But saints of God, we got to know how to handle that. You got to know how to handle yourself in the valley because your enemies are around you. Keep eating that word. Keep shopping for that word. Go in that, that word of God and pull it out. Pull it apart. Part, study it. Meditate on it. Make sure you understand the proper interpretation of it. Go to your Bible study, local Bible studies. Go to your prayer meetings and your Sunday school. And, and uh, when you do that, when those, the, when the little tests come, you can kind of shout over those. When those major valleys come, God said, you've done your part. Guess what? I'm going to spread this table out before you in the presence of your enemies. Your enemies are looking for you to fall. 
They're getting ready to gossip. They're getting ready to talk. They don't know what they're talking about. They speculate. If nobody told you to shut up, go somewhere, you tell God, thank you. Just pray. Pray. We got to know how to handle people. Or it can kill us. It can knock us out. It can make us throw in the town. You got to know how to handle your valleys. The Holy Spirit gave this to me on my way home. I had to go take care of some business. And then he said, then the flip side of that, he said, there's the same danger. Take heed. You know, you may be on a mountain top, but take heed. You're subject to fall. You're a human like anybody else. You're subject to fall. So don't start talking about folk what you think they ought to do. People always can tell you what they think you can do because they're not in they're not in that valley with you. Amen. And you can tell when people get have attitudes and they have uh, taken on an attitude of arrogance. I hate that one right there. You can tell by the way they handle themselves and by the way they treat you. They don't stand physically on that mountain, but you know they're standing there because of the way they treat you. They treat you with their noses in the air. They snub you. Come on in here. They snub you. And they treat you like you are not very important, that you haven't arrived. You haven't gotten to where they are. I would never, you can ask any of my leaders, I would never serve in a position where my attitude was nasty and I couldn't be civil and sweet and nice to people. You don't need it because it's detrimental to you. That mountaintop for you is detrimental. I don't ever want to be there with that type of attitude. God elevates me. I first want him to elevate me in the spirit. I want him to elevate me in my valleys. I want him to elevate me in the things that I have to walk through. I want him to elevate me when you didn't treat me right, but I learned to treat you right. That's elevation for me. So when he, if he decides to take me to the mountain, I know how to act when I get there. I know who took me there. I know who's standing up on that mountain with me. I can't take Jesus on the mountain and take the devil up there too. Now, I know that's a download from the Lord. I cannot. It is, it's asinine to take Jesus to the mountain and stand on the mountain up there with Jesus and then have the devil on the other side of you. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Amen. Is it going to be Christ or mammon? Got to make up our minds. Got to make our decisions, people of God. The church is, is really, I'm not talking about the God's uh, invisible church, but the, the visible church is has the, the example that we're setting. My God, it's, it's, it's pitiful. Amen. I'm going to get out of here, but I want to encourage you with this. I don't know where you are right now, what you're standing in. All I know that God is standing in there with you. And because you are elevated in status, because you're elevated in name, doesn't mean that your mountaintop is giving God the glory. What gives God glory is when we know that he is right there in the midst of where we are and that we give him the glory, we give him the credit, we give him the praise, and we let the character of Jesus Christ shine through us. I love you all. With the love of the Lord, this has been plumb pleasing, a blessing to me tonight. I bless myself tonight, y'all. The word of God has that kind of effect on the people. I don't care who brings it. I mean, you can teach yourself out of stuff. You can preach yourself out of stuff. You can preach yourself up out of the valley. Come on, that word would bring you up out of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love you all. Please sign up for the conference this weekend. I don't know what the Lord's going to say, but we're going we're gonna to talk about healing for the hurt. Healing for the hurt. Thank you, darling. Thank you, Renee. Healing for the hurt. People are signing up. One of the pastors is bringing uh, his flock, uh, part of his flock, two pastors. And I know uh, others probably will be coming. But pastors, you need to come and bring your flock with you. Uh, uh, men of God, evangelists, come. Hear this. Because sometimes maybe we're wounding people that we have We've been wounded. Sometimes we think we've gotten over it and we really haven't. So we're going to talk about how do we handle that? How do you walk through the pain and all this? We got some profound presenters on Friday night. We're going to start promptly at 6. Powerful praise team is going to go forth in the anointing of God. 
and then we're going to put the people up to bring us the word of God. Saturday morning, there will be food. Uh, Friday evening, there will be food for you. All of this, you off two days for $20 registration. Come on now. Come on. Amen. And so to, uh, that Saturday morning, Lord saying the same, I will be before you Saturday morning. And I'm gonna, I don't know which way the Lord's going to take me, but I'm going to wrap it all up. And we're going to have door prizes Saturday morning. Amen. And we're going to worship and enjoy the fellowship together. I love each of you. And you really can do nothing about it. God bless you.